All right, we are on lesson 22.3, page 46. We're going to be using the quadratic formula to solve equations. So, so far we've learned a couple of methods to solve uh, quadratic equations. We learned the factor method, and we learned um, how to complete the square, and we're going to be learning a third way to do it. And so um, this is kind of the Swiss Army Knife method because uh, whenever the other ones don't work, this is, uh, this is the method that will work, that is guaranteed to work. So when you can't factor and when you can't really uh, complete the square one, it's difficult to. Uh, sometimes it's easy it's just to plug into a, an equation and just, just brute, forth, brute force uh, the solution out of it. So anyhow, um, in this page on Explore 1, they uh, take you through uh, the uh, derivation of the uh, quadratic formula. I think it's, um, personally, I think it's kind of useless, um, especially if you're not going to be a math major. But uh, if you're curious how we got to this complicated formula, there we go. That's how to do it. But here's the important part. Um, this is the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. And as long as we can identify what the a, b, and the c term are, um, it's just a matter of finding um, the right place to plug um, plug uh, in those um, those variables so um, it looks complicated um, but it, in fact it's uh, it's actually a lot easier um, than it looks so let's go ahead and try this so um, here's the first part and uh, here and I just now uh, here are some scribbles from before um, when I was taking notes but uh, let me erase some of that um, the first thing that they want to explain to us here and explain one um, is that when you have the quadratic formula, right, this little inside part here is what we call the discriminant, okay? It's b squared minus 4ac. And that's really important because um, the discriminant tells us, or it kind of gives us a preview of what the solution is going to be like. So, for example, if that discriminant, if that b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, you're going to have a graph that looks like this with two solutions here and here. If that discriminant is equal to 0, you're going to have one solution right there. Right at the at the tip of that parabola there, and then if the discriminant is less than zero, you're going to have no real solution. Right later in algebra two, you'll learn um, that these have imaginary roots, but uh, in this case, there are no real solutions. So, um, so uh, that's that's what we're going to be doing at least in this first part, just identifying uh, the number of solutions given the discriminant. So. Um, we'll jump past all this explanation here, but let's let's identify how to um, <coughs> how to work with a discriminant, and it'll give us kind of like a preview of how to do the the rest of the quadratic formula piece. So uh, here's the first problem: two x squared plus six x plus fifteen. This first term is the a, right? A equals two, and we know it's the a because it's attached to the uh, x squared here. Uh, the b is going to be six. And that's attached to the variable uh, with one degree. And then lastly, c is that final term. Um, it's the constant. It has no uh, variable. It's not attached to any variable. So 2, 6, and 15 are a, b, and c, respectively. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to plug it in to uh, the dis discriminant formula here. So, well, what's b? Well, b was 6. So I'm going to put 6 squared minus 4 times a times c. So what was a? a was 2, and c was 15. And just like that, we're almost done. 6 squared is 36, minus 4 times 2 times 15, um, which is, what, 120. And you're going to end up with a negative, uh, negative value here. In this case, it's going to be, what, 36 minus 120 gets us to negative 84. So negative 84, and so the number of real solutions, because it's negative, remember, uh, anything less than 0 means no real solutions. Okay, so there's the answer. Okay, question number two. Let's identify the a, b, and the c. A, b, and c. So a is three. B is negative five. C is fifteen. Okay, and so um, all we're going to do is plug it into our discriminant formula: b squared minus four ac. Um, so b squared is going to be negative five squared minus 4 times 3 times 15. So um, this is going to be 25 minus, what is this, um, 12 times 15 um, minus 180. So this is going to end up being negative again. 25 minus 180 gets us to negative 155. 
And so, because again, it's negative, it's less than zero, no real solutions. Okay, there you go. All right. So let's jump into the actual quadratic formula because we were only working with the discriminant part of this, right? We were only working with this inside part, but now we're going to be able to work with the whole thing, and you'll you'll realize the power of, of what the quadratic formula is able to do when when looking for the solutions. Um, so you can read that explain section on your own. Let's do this part um, together. First of all, we need to rewrite this, right? This C needs to be on the same side as as the rest of them. So we're going to add four to both sides, and here's a new form we need, 3x squared plus 13x plus 4 equals 0. Um, and then let's identify the a and the b and the c, right? a is going to equal 3, b is going to equal 13, and c is going to equal 4 in this case, or in this context. Um, so we've identified the a, b, and the c, and the substitute the values, given that. So um, since we know what the a and the b and the c are, um, let's go and plug those in right into into this ugly thing so um, okay so x equals negative b negative 13 in this case right right there right that's where b goes plus or minus the square root of b squared which is 13 squared minus 4 times a which is 3 times c which is another 4 divided by 2a okay so um, let's see. Step one, we're going to uh, simplify the radical. Okay, so let's rewrite all this um, plus or minus. So we're going to simplify the radical. So instead, we're going to have what is this? Uh, 169 minus 4 times 3 times 4, which is 48 over twice a. Oh, we forgot to put the a. A was what? 3? So 2 times 3. Okay, and then. Simplify the square root is the next step. So x equals negative 13 plus or minus, what is that? Square root of um, 169 minus 48 is what? 121 over uh, 6. So I'm running out of room. Let's move over here. So you end up with x equals negative 13 plus or minus uh, square root of uh, 121 is 11 over 6. And then let's see. So solve for both cases, right? Because we have the plus and the minus to contend with. So let me zoom in here. Let's go um, plus over here. x equals negative 13 plus 11 over 6. And then we also have to have a negative version, right? x equals uh, negative 13 minus 11 over 6. So let's do this one first. We're going to get x equals negative um, 2 over 6, which is also negative 1 third. And in this case, we're going to get x equals negative 24 over 6, which is also x equals um, negative 4. So our answer uh, should be x equals um, negative 1 third and x equals uh, negative, um, negative 4, right? So those are our two answers. Okay, question number two. Okay, so rewrite in standard form. So these guys need to be over there with with the beginning part. So I'm going to subtract six. Uh, sorry, subtract seven uh, x and uh, fifteen from both sides. And the equation you should end up with is two x squared minus seven x minus fifteen equals zero. Unless I identify the a and the b and the c. A is going to be two right there. The b is going to be the negative seven. And then C is going to be negative 15. So those are my A's and B's and C's, right? Uh, and then let's plug it into the quadratic formula. Okay, so quadratic formula, once again, is uh, negative B plus or minus the square root of um, B squared minus 4 times A times C all the way by 2A. So let's try that again. Um, we need a negative b, which is going to end up being positive 7 plus or minus the square root of b squared. I'm just going to go ahead and do this uh, in my head. b squared or negative 7 squared is going to be 49 minus 4 times a, which is 2 times c, which is negative 15 divided by um, twice a, so 2 times 2, which is 4. Okay, so let's take care of the square root. x equals 7 plus or minus, what is this? 49 um, plus 
Uh, what is that? Um, four times two, so eight times fifteen is gonna give me what? One twenty. Okay. Four times one twenty, and then um, divided by four. Okay, let's take care of that square root there. Seven plus or minus. Um, let's see. 169 divided by 4. Um, running out of room, so let's go over there. x equals 7 plus or minus. Square root of 169 is 13 over 4. So we're going to have two separate versions at this point. x equals 7 plus 13 over 4. And we're also going to have x minus, or x equals um, 7 minus 13 over 4. So in this case, we get x equals um, 20 over 4. Or x equals 5 and then in this case we get x equals um, negative 6 over 4 which can be also further simplified to negative 3 over 2 so here's here's the two solutions x equals 5 and x equals um, negative 3 over 2 okay so those are your two solutions in that case okay so um, looks like we're gonna keep using um, just more of the same okay so solve using the quadratic formula so okay so let's go ahead and move 7x and 2 over the same side and when we get it we're going to rewrite this equation as 4x squared plus 7x plus 2 equals 0 where a equals 4 b equals 7 and c equals 2 okay and then Let's plug it into that quadratic formula again. So x equals negative b, which is in this case 7, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is uh, 49, minus 4ac. So 4 times 4 times 2, all divided by 2a. So 2 times 4. Okay, so let's keep uh, simplifying that out. Negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 49 minus, what is that, 16 times 2, which is 32, over 8, because 2 times 4 is 8. Then x equals negative 7 plus or minus, um, what is that, 49 minus 32 gets me to 17. Hmm. Not the prettiest number in the world, but um, let's take what we can get over 8. And... Um, Solve for both cases. So, you know what? I'm going to leave the radical in this case. So, x equals negative 7. We're going to have a plus version. Right? And we're going to have a negative version, right? x equals negative 7 minus the square root of 17 over 8. Okay? So, those are our two solutions. All right, question number four. Uh, rewrite the question. So, let's move that over. So, we're going to add x squared to both sides. And so you end up with x squared plus 6x plus 3 equals 0, where a is 1, b is 6, and c is 3. And then let's plug it in there. x equals negative b, which is negative 6, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 36, minus 4 times 1 times 3, all over 2 times a, which is happens to be 1. So this is going to equal negative 6 plus or minus, what is that, 36 minus 12. 36 minus 12, which is mm, 24. Okay, all over 2. All right, so from here, um, let's see. So we're going to end up with... Um, well, you know what, let's leave it like that because 24 is not a perfect square. So we'll have the um, positive and negative version, right? We'll have a uh, x equals negative 6 plus square root of 24 over 2. Then we'll have um, the negative version, right? We'll have x equals uh, negative 6 minus square root of 24 over 2. Okay. So um, I could have probably simplified this a little bit more, right? If the square root of 24, for example, became... Man, let me see. Um, what what else can we take out from there? We could have taken out a um, 
This could have also been uh, doing a factor tree. We're going to 2, 12, 2, 6, 2, 3. So we could have taken out <coughs> an additional 2 there. Um, and then it, it could have been uh, negative 6 plus or minus 2 square root of 6 divided by 2. Okay, so here's what it could have also been. It could have also been x equals um, divide everything by 2. We could have had negative 3 plus square root of 6 over, or not over 2. It would be over 1 at this point. Can have that. Or, oops, and... Uh, x equals negative 3 minus square root of 6. So that could have been another possible solution, the simplified form of the one on top.